What does Berlin look like today? This is in the very heart of the city, the Kurfürstendamm, once the Bond Street of Berlin. In this graveyard of a city, no one hurries. The tempo of life is slow and laboured. No one smokes. Three shillings for one cigarette is the back market price. There are no buses, no taxis. The only means of travel in the city is the battered old tramway service. Many windows left in the trams. Those that were not bomb shattered have been spirited away by Berliners to replace their own windows at home. Today there are not many passengers, for this is Sunday in Berlin. On a weekday, they push and squeeze onto the trams, inside and outside, grateful even for a tow hole. Once this fashionable street was famous for its handsome buildings, its elegant women, and its cafe society. Today, there is scarcely one complete building left in the Kurfürstendamm. You have to search Berlin to find a restaurant where there's any life at all. There's just one cafe where smarter Berlin does congregate, the Cafe Wien. This is where the Germans spend an hour over a synthetic drink and watch the Sunday afternoon fashion parade. Most people have old clothes. But there are always a few who manage to get a new rig out. Berlin fashions aren't very exciting, although there are one or two new ideas in shoes, mostly because ordinary leather shoes can't be bought. Concentrate hard enough on the passers-by, and you needn't worry about the dullness of things you eat and drink. When you're tired of drinking acorn coffee, join the fashion parade yourself. This smartish Berliner was wearing the natural flower earrings which Miss Berlin favours today. Simple ornaments are easy on empty purses. Prices of new clothes are way beyond the ordinary Berliner. A new outfit costs a good many packets of cigarettes. Still in fashion are Dachshunds, though many have been exported by GIs. This is a typical Berlin fashion of today. The important thing about stockings is their warmth, not their elegance. A Berlin fashion artist described this as really smart. Lots of Berlin women, like this shop gazer, convert two old dresses into a newish one. Not that there's anything to see in the shops. shops that are open have very little to offer, except antiques, ornamental novelties, a few cosmetics and imitation jewellery. No food appears in shop windows, and clothes seem to be strictly under the counter. But that's the west end of Berlin. A notch or two down the social scale is the kind of Tiergarten, more typical of Berlin today. Life is drab and colourless for the young and the old. They are the flotsam and jetsam of two lost wars. They have lost children and their children's children. Many fathers and sons have never been heard of. They may be alive or dead in France or Siberia. Many districts have no shops at all. To buy anything at all, you have to sell something, some precious article of furniture or an old overcoat. From the Kleiner Tiergarten to the departed glories of the famous Tiergarten itself and the Victory Column leading down Victory Avenue, a sardonic reminder of other days. Here the Russian forces invaded, leaving their mark on Germany's heroic figures. Thinker, what now? And the women of Berlin, they work hard, grinding toil. Men's work, for there are few able-bodied men left in Berlin. For them, the day begins at dawn, standing in queues for scraps of food. On their way to work, they keep an eye open for scraps of wood, any fuel to give a few minutes warmth against the cold winter. They've paid bitterly, these women of Berlin, for their Heil Hitler, but a generation of German women before them starved and suffered after the Great War. 
then brought forth more sons to sacrifice for their Fuhrer. How different their fate might have been if their army had been allowed to cross the English Channel. These women remember the exultation when their Luftwaffe bombed London. They remember the thrill of those first parcels of loot sent home from Paris. And they remember the agony of the first thousand bomber raids on Berlin. Above all, Berlin today is international. Four sectors, British, American, Russian, and French. Though this French trickler, dying satirically above Germany's victory column, is in the British sector. The Reichstag, too, is in the British sector, like this Russian war memorial. On Sundays, the Russian soldiers and their wives can stroll freely into the British sector. And we have German women police in our sector. These Russian soldiers walking past the Reichstag didn't like being photographed, although they were visitors in the British sector. International relations are touchy in Berlin. All languages, all countries mingle in Berlin. The Americans have taken their rainbow corner with them. These famous Brandenburger gates, another symbol of defeat, lead from the British sector to the Russian and to Hitler's chancellery. In this most bombed part of Berlin, sightseers point out where the Führer planned to master the world. Souvenir hunters steal blue tiles from his bathroom. And on steps where the Führer strutted, some of the glorious Hitler youth can be found selling souvenirs. Grimmest commentary on Germany today is this true scene of a Hitler youth touting his country's medals for British cigarettes. Berlin is a broken city. Will some new world-shaking warmonger arise from the rubble 